like most people these days, I'm very active on social media, um, whether it be for, you know, keeping in touch with people or posting your photos or whatever it might be. Um, but I have to say, like, over the course of time, it can be a really toxic environment, um, especially, especially uh, around football. And I know it's probably really the same in lots of other stuff, but I don't tend to get too involved in, in too many other specific subjects. Um, but in terms of football, it's it can be quite toxic. Football is a really divisive um, subject and there is so much around people's opinions. And in the videos that I do, I always try to emphasize that this is just my opinion, right? And I'm not expecting anybody to agree with me, although some people do, but I don't expect anyone to agree with me. And I don't mind if people want to call me out and say, well, no, I think you're wrong or whatever. You know, that, that is what it is, right? But over the last sort of, not just over the last sort of few weeks, but in general, um, over the course of time, there has been little things that have come up that have kind of niggled me a little bit. I thought, really, do you have to, why have you got that opinion? And, you know, and, or, or I don't share that opinion or whatever. And it's kind of just come to a bit of a head over this weekend. And I thought, just thought I'd put a list together of the different things that I've kind of seen or, or um, that have been said just kind of sparked a bit of a um a bit of something in my in my head really around it so going back a long time when we was in Wembley um there was a, a an effort made to try to improve the atmosphere in Wembley right from the very start there was a lot of half-time shows and stuff like that and the club were trying different things because obviously Wembley wasn't our home uh, and one of the things they tried um, was uh, someone on a drum um, straight away uh, pretty much unanimously there was a, or from what I could see there was a lot of don't want someone banging a drum creating um, plastic atmosphere it's embarrassing we've now moved on over the last sort of few uh, a couple of seasons now we're back in the ground and, and and everything else and some of these other things have start, now started to come up so crowd surfing display flags embarrassing cardboard signs with kids asking for begging for um player shirts it's embarrassing vloggers embarrassing koreans too many of them that's embarrassing tourists people just turning up for a day out that's embarrassing, not proper football fans. Happy clappers, people that actually support the team regardless of what the what the result is. Embarrassing, not, not proper fans. Ex-players that are maybe standing up for the team or standing up for what's what's going on or giving an opinion on you know, Daniel Levy or whatever. Embarrassing. Pizza in the stands. People eating pizza in the stands. That's embarrassing. Sitting, that's a pain. Standing, that's a pain, it's embarrassing. Pre and post match entertainment in the stadium. Embarrassing, embarrassing. What are them people doing, enjoying themselves? Barry Manilow's can't smile without you before the game. Oh, embarrassing. Gimme, 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 the Kuliszewski song. Embarrassing. Ole, ole, ole. That's embarrassing. That's a that's a Man City song. Um, West Ham, Arsenal, whoever it might be, getting battered. Even calling ourselves Tottenham getting bad. What are we singing at? It's embarrassing. Shelfside, Park Lane, we are embarrassing. Old, oh, what? You know, give up on that. And the same old songs getting sung all the time. Embarrassing. So it kind of made me think, if all this stuff is embarrassing and not what Spurs fans want, what do we want? Well, you know, what do we want as Spurs fans? I go up with, with a group of lads and ladies um, 
every home game. We, uh, we have a laugh on the bus. We get to the gill pin. We have our breakfast. We have a bit of a giggle. We mess about with the, with the staff there. Really friendly bunch. We have something to eat. It would go over to, to LTs or some will go down to Redemption Brewery or Bricklayers or whatever it might be. And in those places, it's full of, you know, we're looking for atmosphere. People go to LTs for the atmosphere. You know, it's a great pub, music playing, people enjoying themselves, singing songs. So it does make me wonder when you kind of start talking about pre and post match entertainment. People want it. People want that because it's not like the old days where you're just going there for the 90 minutes and you're turfed out, off you go. Blah, blah. The, the club is trying to um, make that a smoother exit because there are, you know, some real, uh, real issues around getting trains and underground and blah, 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 that filtering people out and giving them somewhere to hang around for a while is, is, a, is a good option. And it obviously makes lots of money for the club. So the guy who sits there and, and makes up songs and entertains the crowd, he's doing a job, right? He's trying to create an atmosphere, much like a DJ in a pub, for instance. And we have got a DJ at, at, at White Hart Lane who, um, who DJs and stuff, because there's entertainment on, on lots of the different levels or in the different bars. Um, but that's people enjoying themselves. Because they've paid 60-odd quid. They've travelled from all over to watch a game. We come up from Dorset. It's a, a three-hour run there, a three-hour run back. Whenever we go to football, it's a 12-hour day. Some of the guys that live nearby, you know, they go a couple of hours, blah, blah, blah. They're okay with it. Um, and listen, and I'm not sticking up for it. You know, it makes no difference to me one way or the other. I don't really partake in it. I don't spend in, in the stadium. I, I tend to go to the pub or whatever. But what I am trying to get to is people do like to be entertained. This isn't the 80s, you know, where people turned up before the game, had a, had a breakfast in Jack's Caff, watched the football, went out, tried to have a ruck, and then went home and had a few beers in the evening. It's not like that anymore. You know, people expect more. People want more. You know, you, you can't have the same thing happening all the time things have to have to progress it's the same with songs right i um i'm not a great lover of uh, can't smile without you at the start of the game don't think it really it's not really stirring or anything but i understand why the club are trying to do it they're trying to create an identity you know what other song what other tottenham song and bear in mind um, can't Smile Without You has been a Tottenham song for, well, as long as I can remember. You know, it's always been sung, certainly on away games and around the pubs and stuff. What other song can we do? You know, could we do Tom Ark? You know, Arsenal fan on a string. I don't think the TV companies are going to let us do that. I don't think they're going to, I think they're going to mute that out. Um, you know, they're trying to stop us with the Yid Army chant and all the rest of it. So I can't see that they're really going to be happy with us doing something like that. Um, so, you know, I can understand why the club are trying to do that. And there are fans that have asked for it. There are fans that have championed that song as a as a starting song. You know, is AJ Tracy's track... You know, is that a Spurs song? Is that something we, you know, we really want to hear? Some some younger fans might do. I don't know. But, you know, from my point of view, you know, I think, you know, if the club is trying to do something, then that's the right thing to do. Um, if you go on to the tourists and the, and the careers, those guys come and they support Sonny. Okay. They pay their money. They support the club. They chant. They sing. They get involved. Right. That's what fans are for. You know, Tottenham have got fans all over the world. There are clubs, you know, supporters clubs in every country around the globe. So, you know, not everybody gets the opportunity to come there week in, week out, you know. Not everybody gets to turn up late, leave early for half time, come back late from half time and then leave early in the, in the match, making you get up and down like an all's draws so that you to be able to watch the game. You know, so then we've all got our pet peeves of things that, that occur, you know. 
But in terms of, of supporters, a supporter's a supporter. It doesn't matter who they are, where they're from, what they're, what they're doing, what their their thing is. You know, you you can't have all the same people all of the time. You know, you've got to give it, you know, you've got to give way to the next generation that's coming through. And that brings me on to the songs. You know, if you're fed up with the same old songs, but you don't like all of the new songs, where do you go from there? You know, it has to progress. It has to develop, you know, and people are putting effort in. You know, we don't we don't criticise Liverpool fans for making up, making up their own, making up their own songs or Man City fans or whatever it might be. Right. And every, you know, every team has their own anthems, their songs that they sing or whatever. And you say, you know, oh, we're stealing that song from from whoever. Well, every football song was stolen from somewhere, you know. Um, I, I guess the point I'm making is you can't stand still. Football can't stand still. The and I'll be absolutely honest: the atmosphere inside the White Hart Lane Stadium is poor. It's poor. Wembley was dire. It was absolutely diabolical. Um, the stadium now isn't that much better, in my opinion, because you very rarely get a full group of the, the fans getting involved, you know, and all the rest of it. And that may be because of, you know, people not knowing the songs or not really um, being um, into it or whatever. But additionally, it might be because a lot of the supporters that go there are like me, middle-aged men um, who don't really feel the need to to get up and sing and all the rest of it and want to give that to somebody else but you know uh, expecting somebody else to to make the uh make the atmosphere but to make an atmosphere you you know you've got to get involved you've got to do something rather than just moan about it every little change every little thing everything's embarrassing you've got to recognize that things are changing you know with football and, and the way it goes you know you, you want to make it hostile you want to make it you know a difficult place for other teams to come but that means you've all got to do it you know you've all got to get involved and rather than criticize and moan about what everybody's trying to do why don't you get involved and do something yourself you know i saw a thing the other day there's a a, a group that are crowdfunding and forgive me because i don't know what their name is or, or anything to do with it they're crowdfunding to try and get flags to, to go in the ground that they can put up and um with um with that situation um i thought you know what it's, it's a good idea you know i like the flags i like to see flags there's not many places to hang them um and so the south Dorset spurs guys said well, about bringing our flag again because we hadn't had anybody responsible to uh, to put it out and collect it because it kept getting forgotten, so I've taken that on because I thought, yeah, that's, you know what, that's a good idea. Let's get the flag. Let's start displaying our colours around the around the south stand. That would that would be really good. So I thought, well, I'll join in and and do that. Um, so I, I guess I don't know. I, you know, I, I suppose I am just rambling on, um, but I just feel that there's so much negativity around the ground and around social media about anything that anyone's trying to do. And I think, you know, it's all well and good, you know, not everybody can afford to go, not everybody can afford to go all the time, not everybody can, you know, have the great ideas or whatever. But we can't just keep shooting people down every time they try to do something, whether it's, you know, a good idea or not a good idea. And the same thing about this, this comment of, it's embarrassing, you know, who's it embarrassing? Is it embarrassing you or is it embarrassing the club? You know, I, I don't think so. I don't think the club are embarrassed. You know, I, like I say, I don't subscribe to a lot of this stuff, you know. I, you know, yeah, I do I do um, videos on YouTube. I don't video myself in the ground. I don't do, you know, in in match commentary or anything of that, of that nature um, because, I, you know, I don't really to subscribe to that idea but there are people that watch it and that enjoy it there is a market for it so people will do it if there is a market for it people will do it i've had people say to me you know we want to see that match day experience because they don't get that opportunity but they are as invested in the club as as anybody 
So all the while you've got that investment from people, people are going to try and give it because it, it makes sense. Now, it might be embarrassing. You might think, oh, this is embarrassing. It's new age. It's new new way of football. Now. But it's not embarrassing you personally. It's, in, it's embarrassing the person who's, who's doing it if they're embarrassed. But if they're not embarrassed and they're enjoying it and people are enjoying their content, then why worry about it, you know? Um, yeah, so... I guess I'm just trying to get things off my chest, really, because I've just there's been just so much negativity. Everything, everything on this list is stuff that I have seen on social media over the last, you know, couple of weeks of people going, oh, this ain't no good. That ain't no good. Why are we doing this? Why are we doing that? That's embarrassing. That's no good. Da, da, da. And I just think, you know what? If there's no other option, if there's no other alternative, if no one's providing any other ideas, why not? Why not? You know, um, I see these guys dancing around in the in the concourses on videos and stuff like that. And I'm like, you know what? Good luck to them. You know, they're enjoying it. They've had a they've had a skin full of beer. They've watched their team just win. Someone's creating some some funny songs from a sing along to. What's wrong with that? What's wrong with that? It's not hurting anybody. It's not hurting anybody. It might not be our idea or your idea of how football should be. But like I say, this ain't the eighties. This ain't the eighties. This ain't the nineties. This is you know the twenty twenty two. You know, and uh, and things are moving on. It's not our game anymore. It's not yours. It's not not mine. It's for everybody who wants to go, who wants to get involved, who is a supporter of the club or, or or whatever. So, you know, I guess I'm just saying, let's just let's just see where it goes. You know, let's just get behind the team. It would be great to have a really good atmosphere in in the stadium for once at some point. You know, to really get behind the team and, and show our support. And if that means flags, songs, you know, I mean, we've talked. I, I'm going to ramble on a little bit longer, sorry. But if you think about, I've seen stuff from Steve Archibald. Now, there was a song, for those of you who don't know, for Steve Archibald, um, which was, we'll take more care of you, Archibald, right? And some people have suggested putting that out for other players, right? And Steve Archibald went, whoa, that's my song. I'm sure he didn't really mean it, like, you know, that's mine, I don't want, you know. But the point is, as a football player, to have your own song, to have a song for you, is a great accolade. It's it's a it's a recognition of what you've done or who you are for the club. And so from that perspective, it means something. So having this gimme, 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 a ginger from Sweden song might seem embarrassing to you. But for for Kudasevsky, he may be thinking to himself, wow. I've been here since January. I've already got my own song. There's players there that have been playing for a few years that haven't got their own song. So, you know, for him, it might feel like a really good thing. He might be really chuffed with that and it might spur him on. It might make him feel connected to the club, to your club. So I don't know. Just some thoughts. Just some thoughts. Take them or leave them. Let me know in the comments. Am I right? Am I wrong? You know, what of these things on this list that really have to go, that really do get up your nose? Um, or how much of this is just, you know, something to say, something to moan about? I don't know. Keep the faith. Keep on supporting. And as ever, up the spurs.